the aim of optimization is to pick the best solution out of a huge number of possible solutions. Traditional approaches to do this include methods like gradient descent, Lagrange multipliers, and simplex. Genetic algorithms are an alternate way to solve optimization problems. It involves searching the solution space using a set of points that are continuously evolving based on a set of rules. It offers several advantages over traditional approaches. These are listed on the screen. Genetic algorithms derive their inspiration from nature. They are modeled along the lines of natural selection. This makes sense intuitively as natural selection can be thought of as a grand optimization scheme. The higher the survivability of a species, the more likely it is to survive in that environment for longer. Every species alive today is a result of this optimization problem with ever-changing constraints. Let's get started with some terminology. A solution to a problem consists of a set of integers. Every integer can be converted to a binary string. Hence, every integer solution to the problem can be represented by a binary string. A gene refers to a single bit of the string. Flipping the gene gives us a new solution. The binary string is referred to as a chromosome. A group of chromosomes is referred to as a population. Population is a group of solutions to the problem. The first step is to initialize a population. This involves creating a random group of solutions. For example, if we are required to find the maximum of a 2D search space, a certain solution is represented by the ordered pair x, y. An initial population then translates to initializing a bunch of binary chromosomes that correspond to a bunch of random points in the search space. Our hope is to use these arbitrary points and somehow end up at the optimal solution. The next step is to identify the objective function. This is related to the quantity that we are optimizing. We would want solutions that are closer to the optimal solution to have a higher fitness value than the rest. The fitness of a solution is the value obtained when it's substituted into the objective function. This can be understood more clearly with the help of an example later in this video. When passed through the objective function, different solutions have different fitness values. Here, higher fitness chromosomes have been represented with darker shades of blue. The next step is to eliminate the members of the population with low fitness values. This is done as a precursor to the mating step. Optimal solutions are visualized as peaks. The solutions with low fitness values usually tend to be far from such points. Retaining such points will prevent the algorithm from searching more intensely around the solution with high fitness values, which are closer to the actual optimal solutions. The remaining members of the population mate and produce offsprings to restore the population. Mating involves mixing the parent chromosomes and obtaining a child chromosome. Random mutations are also introduced in the form of flipping genes at random. This is repeated over several generations. We'll now explore all the steps in detail by going through an example. We'll optimize a single variable function using the algorithm discussed previously. Consider the single variable function shown on the screen. Our task is to find that value of x that maximizes y. This is a simple function that has only a single maxima. As can be seen from the graph, the maxima occurs at x is equal to 3. With no prior information apart from the equation of the function, we hope to arrive at this answer using only our algorithm. 
as seen before, the first step is to initialize a set of trial solutions. In this example, that corresponds to initializing a set of points on the x-axis. This constitutes the population. This population is stored as a matrix. Each row represents a chromosome, that is, a point on the x-axis in our case. More generally, all the parameters that constitute a solution are combined into a binary chromosome. Using binary arithmetic, any point on the line can be represented as a binary sequence. Hence, the size of the search space can be controlled by the number of bits in the chromosome. Let's consider the following points as our initial pop. As the objective is to maximize the value of y, we can use a function y is equal to f of x as our objective function. Hence, a chromosome that is a solution x that has a high y value will have a high fitness value. For example, the chromosome corresponding to the point 2 will have a significantly higher fitness value when compared to the point 9 as can be seen from their corresponding y values. The fitness values are calculated for each chromosome in the population by substituting it into the objective function. The chromosomes are first converted to their decimal values, then they are substituted into the objective function. They are then sorted according to their fitness values and a certain section of the population with low fitness is removed. This is shown in red. The solution with the best fitness is stored as the elite chromosome and is shown in blue. This elite value is the best solution for a given generation. Now, with the remaining part of the population, we have to create a parent's pool. The offspring produced by the parent's pool replenish the population with higher quality individuals. The parent's pool is selected using roulette wheel selection. The candidate pool consists of the population left over from the selection step. Consider a set of six candidates with the following fitness values. Using its fitness values, a probability is calculated for each candidate. This is done by dividing the fitness of a candidate by the sum of the fitness values of all candidates. This gives us a list of probabilities. Using these probabilities, a roulette wheel is constructed. In a roulette wheel, the probability of obtaining a certain color is proportional to the area covered by that color. The parent pool is filled by spinning the roulette wheel six times. Hence, the higher the fitness value of the chromosome, the higher the probability of the chromosome populating the parent's pool. The offsprings are created from the parents using the crossover mechanism. Two chromosomes are selected from the parent's pool. A crossover location is then randomly selected as three. The crossover mechanism on a pair of chromosomes works as shown. Hence, two parents give rise to two children which represents new unique solutions or in our case new points on the x-axis. The children are then added to the population pool to restore it to the original population size. We now have a new and improved population. The final step is to introduce mutations. The crossover step causes points to be created around the high fitness individuals. This promotes localized searching and is very effective at finding the peaks around the high fitness individuals. However, in complex functions where there's multiple local maxima and minimas, this can cause the algorithm to converge and get stuck at local optima. To avoid this, mutations are introduced. Random genes are flipped in the matrix on the left to create the new population on the right. This adds new points which might be anywhere in the search space and encourages exploration to discover global optima. We now use the population from the mutation step and use it as the initial population for the next iteration where we carry out the same steps again. We run it until it converges, that is, we run it till the fitness values no longer change. 
This graph shows the behavior of a genetic algorithm that's running correctly. The average fitness value should improve with every generation. The MATLAB code with the example we discussed is linked in the description. The trade-off between localization and exploration can be observed by varying the various parameters involved in the code. Also, as there is randomness involved, the best solution is typically obtained after running the algorithm multiple times. Do try it yourself and verify yours for yourself that the best solution actually comes out to be x is equal to 3 and matches our observations.